blessing to us all this week. Thank you. Give my one more on the time. Can. Jesus spoke, he saw the words 
that he spoke were gentle. They were kind words. They were healing words. They were words of wisdom. They were words that were going to bring life. And he saw that. And he said in his heart at that point, even if it gets hard, I've got nowhere to go back. And you think about God, there's no plan B. We all know what plan B is. We have a plan in our mind. Oh, if it doesn't work, then I'll try this. That's not God's way. God has one plan for man, that he would repent, be baptised, and he would speak in a new tongue. And then he would act like a son or daughter of God. There's always that little bit at the end. And I always draw inspiration from that, that where else would I turn? When things get out hard in our lives, wherever it be, there's one answer. There's not option B, there's not plan B, and there's nothing to go back to. It was like the children of Israel. There was nothing in the wilderness. Oh, but we had something to eat in Egypt. And we had, what they had in Egypt was slavery and death. And in the New Testament type, we're slaves to sin and death. And that's what we would go back to. Oh, but there were flesh pots. There were things to eat. There were things to do. No. Once we started our journey with the Lord, and amen, we're all spirit-filled. All spirit-filled. We've got nowhere else to turn. The Lord has the words of life. Every time you get on your knees in your private prayer and you speak in another tongue, you're speaking the words of life. They're bringing life to your soul. They're bringing peace to your soul. The encouragement from that little verse there I've always taken is that way that there's only one direction and only one thing to follow. There's no plan B. There's nothing to go back to. It's all to look forward to when our Father returns to take us home. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you, True. I'm glad to hear I'm asked to be here. Uh, I was here about 10 years ago. Uh, that was the last time I was at this hall. Um, I had my Mary along me, Sister Amber Rose, with me then as well. She says to say hello. She met many of you then. Uh, we are plenty of us. We have two Papua New Guinea now. Uh, and we are rejoicing in the Lord and still going strong, doing the work, which is what I'm going to talk about today, doing the work uh, and just being plenty, plenty of us. In Galatians 6, this is my uh, lifting thought, Galatians 6 verse 7, it says, Be not deceived or tricked. Don't be tricked, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. And, and you understand this better than we do from, from Australia because you do more of this. And if you if you want a coconut, if you want a coconut, do you plant cow cow? No. Do you plant cow cow and expect coconut to grow? No. no. Do you plant coconut and expect to get some potatoes? No. no. What you sow, what you plant, is what grows. And so this scripture here says, whatever you sow, you reap, and we'll keep reading in verse 8, it says, For he that sows to the flesh will reap of the flesh. He that sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Amen. And so just as you don't plant a coconut if you want cow cow, don't plant to the natural, don't take natural actions if you want to get a spiritual result. If you want to grow spiritually, you want to be stronger spiritually, you need to plant so to the Spirit. How do you do that? What does Jude say? Build yourself up in your most holy faith. How? Praying in the Spirit. Talk, talk, narrow, fellow, talk, please. Spend time praying in the Spirit and build yourself up. If you want to grow spiritually, so to the Spirit. And we'll read one more verse, just there, verse 9. It says, And let us not be weary in well-doing. There are many, many people here, faces I've seen for many, many years. Some of you came to Australia when I was a kid and visited us there. There are people here who have been around a very, very long time. This is a, this, But this is to all of us. Don't grow weary in your well-doing. How do you grow weary? If you're not building yourself up. That's the only way you can grow weary or tired of doing good work. If you're not spending time to build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, 
spending that time, as we said, tok tok, narrow fella tok place. And we'll finish the verse, it says, uh, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. So you plant the coconut, but it takes some years before you can actually get coconuts back. Okay? That's where patience comes in. You sow now, but if we faint not, if we continue on our path, we will reap when the Lord returns. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, True. to stop on this place. Um, me like a true from us. Let's all get a man a medium come along stop along Lotu. Um, some uh, men a medium come long way. A big blow work. Me hamamas. Look at you. In the top. Now uh, number one scripture belong me this for day in James chapter four verse eight. Me uh, talk easy. Okay? Amen. Uh, you play, you must be go close to true, long God. You may talk? Amen. Knowing by him come close to true, long you play. You play, my name belongs sin. Bell belong you play, he must come up kind, clean. Awesome man, he was him. Now belong him, now he come up clean. You play, man, he get to play, ting ting. You play, he must last him, this play, ting ting. No good, long bell, long you play. You know? When you look in the scripture here, if God, big pull up of a God, him wants to stop long, you play. Am I right? If big pull up of a God, he make him all get the things. He make him a uh, universe. He make him planet. He make him bird of paradise. He make him Papua New Guinea. He make him Papua New Guineans. Him come and stop long, you play. Am I right? You fill up one time on Holy Spirit. You talk talk now about a topless and big blood, Papa God, and stop long inside you. Give it up. Yeah. Power belong, God, stop long inside you. Hammer must belong, God, stop long inside you. Belly Z belong, God, big blood, Papa God, stop long inside you. Yeah. Big blood, Papa God, big blood, Papa God, in one to be close to you. Give it up. How do you? Awesome woman, you go close, strong God. You talk talk now about a topless, you may talk. Amen. You come along low to, you may talk. Amen. You hear them with God, Amen. you work with long hands. Am I right? Amen. If you want to become close to God, you have all the tools, you may talk. Amen. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. When you talk in other tongues, you are speaking with the God that made everything. Amen. And He is in you. And the scripture says there, and I'm just saying this English for Pastor Simon, because he needs to hear it. <laughs> As if you draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. You may talk. Yeah. And the amazing thing is, as you pray in the Holy Spirit, as you read the word of God, as you come to fellowships, as you love the things that God loves, you find out that God was always close to you when you received the Holy Ghost. You may talk. This is my favorite scripture today. You draw an eye to God, and God will draw an eye to you. you Amen. Amen. God bless. Give me a second. What a big round of applause. Okay, last thing of ready, and I will give a main talk to you today, and you are going to preach a pastor for some reason. Thank you, Drew Pastor Meshach. We plenty hamamas look and we'll get And uh, it's great to be here again. And this man down here, he said that we are white pellets. No gat. No gat. We are Christ pellets. You, me, one talk along Jesus Christ. And uh, one of the things that I love, and I said it to the pastors just before, is that we're not here to be your guana, that's an African word, to, to be your bosses. We are here because we love you. We are here because we are the same before Jesus Christ. We all have the same Holy Ghost Spirit side belt along you that belong me. I'm not your boss. I'm not Pastor Meshach's boss. I'm not Pastor Darcy's boss. Number one, big block, uh, top pillar, what do you call it? Uh, number one, 
Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the principal pastor. He is the boss for us in the Revival Center Church. Am I right? You better talk. Is that your rubbish? blessing world. Yeah, that's for the olives. Now I feel very honored to be here today because I am with you and you are God's chosen people. God has chosen you. He called you and he said, come to me and I will fill you with the Holy Ghost. And every person in this room has kissed some Holy Ghost, never palatok bliss. And as Pastor David was saying, you must narrow palatok bliss all time, all time, all time. Because when you narrow palatok bliss, Jude verse 20, it says there that he builds you up in the most holy faith. He makes you strong, he builds along you. He gives you a good platinum thing. He gives you strong muscles and strong bones so that you can live all time, all time. Yeah. You know, the Bible says in John 3, 5, it says there, and a man named Nicodemus, and he was not so good a man, but he heard big miracles, and he came to Jesus, and he said, how do you do this? And Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see. So the first thing he said was, Jesus says, that when you are born again, you will see. And then the second thing, two verses later, he said that when you turn and go kiss some Holy Ghost, narrow pal, talk place, you will see, and then you will, and because you see, you will then be able to enter the kingdom of God. Amen. So it's very important. You know, when we kiss some Holy Ghost, narrow pal, talk place, and we see in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, you know that verse, it is our verse, that verse is in your heart because you narrow pal, talk place. Now, when you kiss him and take that verse and you receive the Holy Spirit, this is just the beginning for you. Amen. This is the tools, as we've just been told. But in verse uh, line uh, 17, it talks there about uh, how that uh, God will give us out of his spirit. He will give us a vision of the Holy Spirit. He will give us uh, a new way to think. He will give us a new ting ting. He will give us a new heart. But see, some people, they might have a palatopolis, but they do nothing. They just sit back and, oh, I'm okay, I'm narrow palatopolis, I kiss some Holy Ghost, whatever. And they never grow in God's love. They never grow in their appreciation of what it means to have a calling, in their appreciation of what it means to be chosen by God. There's two things that happen on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost was poured out. And the second thing is, it prophesied that those people that realize that the Holy Ghost is good will use the Holy Ghost and they will grow in the Spirit and they will get a strong ting ting and they will have a vision of the kingdom of God. You know, in Hebrews chapter 11, all time there was many things that happened there, all kinds of miracles, and it's called the chapter of the long faith inside that Bible. And in this chapter, it says at the beginning, and I'll, I'll read you this verse. It's a good little verse. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Do you know what our job is? Do you know what our calling is? You know, the Word of God says that we... Yeah, here in Papua New Guinea, here in New Zealand, here wherever it is, who gives some Holy Ghost in Arabella Cockles, we our job is to show forth the praises of our God and let people see that we have a vision of the Holy Spirit because it is our vision of the Holy Spirit that helps them to see that the kingdom of God is at hand and Jesus Christ will return. We are part of the calling. This is the chosen. The word of God says for us to redeem the time. And redeem the time means to make every moment count for the Lord Jesus Christ. You better talk. You know, many years ago, I was over here and we had a big rally in May. And this uh, rally was uh, too big, too much. 675 Kiss and Holy Ghost and Arapala talk place. And I was here with uh, Pastor Lloyd, Daddy Belong Me. And uh, even Daddy Belong Me had people at Iwara. 
and we're sitting on the stage in lay and all these things were happening and it was just a day like the day of Pentecost. It was just, my heart was bigger than it's ever been. And I remember going down and there was this man. He came in the prayer line and him, am I belong him bugger up on there, just all sort of glazed over and he was blind. And I remember, I said, oh, this is going to be a strong prayer from Pastor Simon to fix this bloke's eyes with bugger up eyes like that. And anyway, yeah, I just mispronounced that word. Yeah, and um, so I, I prayed for him. And for some reason, I, I did not close my eyes because I wanted to see whether he could see. And I prayed for him, laid hands on him and, uh, and asked the Lord to heal him. By his stripes, we are healed and all that sort of thing. And guess what? His eyes, the pupils of his eyes, they were all like fog. And, and they just went black and he and the funny thing is there that I, I made I just whoa this is proper this is powerful this is real this is the power of God working in this man Amen. and I remember thinking at the time this is a little bit like John 3 5 this is a little bit like John 3 3 this man when his eyes became good I remember afterwards I talking to him and he's looking around and he's going, oh, this is beautiful, green. This is, what color is this? Because he, he could not see before. And he's looking around and he's, oh, you. Oh, my Mary, she is beautiful. I thought she had a book book face. But she's a beautiful Mary. Because his eyes were bummer up. And this is a bit like, there's a little story here. This is a bit, little bit like us. We kiss some Holy Ghost and then we never open our eyes. We are the chosen. Amen. We are the servants of God. Amen. And we will be ruling and reigning all time, all time. And every person that gives some Holy Spirit, this lady here, this piccaninny here, this man on the keyboards, if you narrow up on the top place and you see the kingdom of God, that means that you'll walk in the Spirit and you will enter the kingdom of God. And what will happen, you will live all time, all time. But more, you will be helping the Lord Jesus Christ to rule and reign. You'll be moving amongst the people on earth, fixing up all the earth that is in a state of chaos. There's wars and there's rumours of wars and there's people that are hurting and people that are dying and the love of God that's in your heart, that's in your ting ting, is going to fix the world. And Jesus Christ is going to say to you, yeah, you man, he's going to say, hey, you go fix that. And you will say, thank you, Papa God, no problem. I have an anointing of the Holy Spirit. I have opened my eyes. I know what to do because I have God's love in my heart because God's love is going to rule and reign. God's love is going to fix the planet. And we are the chosen. We are the ones that have been given the tools. We are the ones. And God's going to say, hey, Simon, I want you to go down and fix up Philip Island, big country. I want to go down there. And I will say, yes. People of Papa God, because I have an unction, I have an anointing of the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God says that if I open my eyes, if I pray in the Spirit, I will know all things like Jesus Christ. Is this good? Is this what you want? This is not just about who's got the best church, or the best name, or the best logo. That's stupid. It's got nothing to do with it. Every person not just the pastor, not just the leader, not just the house leader, but that's the merry, it's the pig and it is. Everybody that is born again has a direct link to God. Amen. Open your eyes. Pray in the Spirit. See who God's made you to be. See that it is eternal. See that the Lord Jesus Christ didn't die on the cross so we can go into church and look at the floor like in the Catholic Church and live our lives in fear. The Catholic Church has taught people to be afraid of God. God has given us the tools.
God has given us, and sometimes people are forgiven and passing for more, and all this kind of stuff. God has given the tools. If you pray in the Spirit, if you walk in the Spirit, you will not do these things. Amen. You're part of it, Tom. It is not possible to do these things if you're walking in the Spirit. Amen. Friends, the Word of God says to redeem the time. And what that means is to make every moment count. We are living at the end of the gospel era. The next thing that's going to happen, and you know there are many pastors here that know many things from scriptures and prophecy and all that. You know in Matthew 24 it talks about the end of the world and it talks about, and Jesus was there with his friends and he's saying, and they said, well, how will we know when the end of the world comes? And he said, look, there'll be wars and there'll be rumors of wars and there'll be pestilence and there'll be famine and there'll be this and there'll be that and it's going to get all over the place. And he said, you know what he said most of all? Don't be deceived. Don't let anybody take you from your God. Amen. Keep your ting ting clean. And the way we keep our ting ting clean is we walk in the spirit. We walk by faith, not by sight. And it's like that man that I talked about when his eyes came good. Like in John chapter 3. He was, he was walking around. He couldn't believe the wonder of vision. And we have been given the wonder of vision. The word of God says, you know, when there is no vision, the people perish. So what I'm saying there, what the Word of God is saying there, is each and every person must have a vision for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's not about you having Pastor Simon's vision, or Pastor Joel's vision, or Pastor Kelsey's vision, or whoever it is. You must have a vision yourself. Amen. Amen. Everyone that kisses the Holy Ghost narrow pallet talk, then open your eyes. Amen. Amen. Get down on your knees. Amen. Pray to the Lord and say, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Amen. And you, as you move closer to the Holy Spirit, as Pastor David was saying, you will rule and reign. He'll raise you up to meet you in the air. It'll be all time, all time. You'll be given beautiful things to do. You've already got the words to say because God's word is written in your heart. You're not going to have to look in your iPad or on your phone. You won't need any of that stuff because you are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Don't forget it. The Word of God says that you are going to judge angels. That's not just Pastor Simon. That's Fred over here and Mary here, whoever you are. If you were born again walking in the Spirit, you are going to judge angels. You are going to, you are going to judge nations. This is what your job will be in the New Jerusalem. Sometimes we think, oh, I've got to meet the Lord in the air. Good, good, good. That is good. That's the best objective. But sometimes we forget what comes next. The Lord Jesus Christ is depending on us to spread the love across the planet whilst he restores that he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is going to be wonderful. It is going to be beautiful. And I'll tell you something. There's going to be a lot of black bliss in the kingdom of God. And I don't care if this piccaninny here is born again and he's my boss man, I will love what he says to me. Because he too, he too has God's love written in him. This is not about pastors being important or others. It is about everybody matters to God. So don't let anyone tell you that you don't matter. You are important. God filled you with the Holy Spirit and he gave you the connection belong you. You don't have to go into a seals. You don't have to go into the confession box or all this stupid stuff that they've invented to make you afraid. You can just go into your home or stand under the tree or sit on the beach or go over there and you can pray in tongues and it is a miracle. And don't you forget that it's a miracle. And the more you do that, the more the Lord says will enlarge your vision, will open your eyes to the wonder of his creation, to the splendor of the future, to a world where the lion, 
the lion and the lamb and the fig and any will be buddies together. How can that be? There's only one way it can be. Because God loves us. In power we talk. Let's have a prayer. Hallelujah. Praise the name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Strong now. Hallelujah. Praise the name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we love our God. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the people, Lord, and that we're all in this together. Lord, you've filled us with your Holy Spirit. You've given us the keys to eternal life. Lord, we pray that if any here have been struggling a little, that they'll open their eyes, that they'll come into their closets and pray, and you'll open up their hearts, and not just will they see, but they will enter in to the goodness of God. They will see their jobs. They will see their calling, and they have been chosen to represent you. Lord, we thank you for this day. And we pray that you'll mightily bless us all as we come to your time of communion. You pat every talk. Amen.